So in this video today, I'm going to show you how I made an MDF mold for this deck receiver in this fiberglass lid. All right, so this lid and receiver is going to be small. It's a six inch by six inch uh, lid and receiver without gutter. So this is going to be used for access to a, a fuel tank sending unit. So I just started by cutting out my first uh, master template and then I'm cleaning up the edges here with my belt sander. Um, I didn't have any router templates to make perfectly uh, matched corners, um, which I ended up buying those uh, shortly after doing this project. But here I'm just using a can of PB blaster to get um, the corners of this template um, all consistent to where I wanted them. So I knew I was going to need a couple of these exact same 6x6 six six, um, template blanks I guess if you will. So I just went ahead and used a flush trim bit, screwed this to another piece of wood and I think I made three or four of these um, and I ended up using most of them um, throughout this project which you'll see here. So I just used the flush trim bit to make an exact copy of the first 6x6 six six piece that I made. So here I'm just uh, building the base um, that's going to be the base for the mold and I'm just centering up um, um, this template piece on this blank piece and then I just use a drill and a countersink bit to countersink just some dry wall, drywall screws and to secure this first part of the mold um, to the base. All right, so here I'm just adding a quarter inch uh, round over to this first part of the mold and this is going to give um, you know, the final piece a nice round radius corner. So you can see here it's about a quarter inch round over on the first part of this mold. So I'm not really sure what happened to the video file of me making this second part of the, um, the mold, but you can see here I took uh, the second blank that I had made earlier and I made it slightly smaller than the original 6x6 using my rabbit bit and a spiral flush trim bit. So I took off about a half an inch all the way around and then I added the next step um, in this. So it's really hard to visualize why I made three steps in this, but when you see the final part, you'll understand why I added that third step. Um, and you'll see that in part two of this video when I cover uh, the, lamp, the prepping of the mold and the lamination. All right, so here again, I'm just using a countersink bit and pre-drilling this so the wood doesn't crack and then screwing the second piece to the top of the first three quarter inch piece. So I grabbed my router there because I need to add about a quarter inch round over um, on this piece, but I realized that I couldn't do it because the bottom of the router bit would, would bottom out on the step below it. So I just used my belt sander here and carefully went around and, and took the edge off um, of that second piece and uh, did the round over by hand. So here I'm mixing up some, this is just some regular auto body lightweight filler. So I'm mixing this up and I'm going to be putting it into uh, the corners of that mold to create a radius um, around the bottom. So I can't do an inside radius with my router. So we need to use this filler um, to hand form a nice radius on this mold. So working with Bondo is super frustrating because it dries so fast. If you get the mixture a little bit too hot, I mean, it could cure um, on you within minutes. Uh, luckily, the temperature wasn't too hot today. So here I'm just mixing up a little bit of Bondo at a time and then squishing it into um, the crease with my finger. And then I'm going to grab something that has a radius on it. And I actually use a piece of hot glue, which is about maybe a 3 8 inch radius and once I have it squished into the corner here with my finger I take that hot glue and drag it around the edge and it makes a super clean radius um, in that corner. So from here I'm just using my metal spatula to clean up all of the excess so I like to try to clean up as much as I can so that I don't have to sand it off later so um, now I'm using the hot glue um, piece to just drag it around um, the filler and the rounded edge on the hot glue uh, makes a really nice um, a, again about a 3 8 inch uh, radius in the corner and then I clean it up a little bit more with the spatula removing any of the lumps and ridges so that it, I just have to sand less uh, after it cures. All 
All right, so there you can see a nice clean radius. And once this cures, we'll come back and sand it and fine tune it, add any filler if we need to. All right, so the next step of this process is making a second mold for the lid itself. So here's my rabbiting bit and I have an eighth inch bearing on it. So this is the first blank that I cut originally, that's six by six. So I know that I need to make my lid a little bit smaller than six by six so that the lid actually drops into the receiver. So I usually like to put an eighth inch gap between my receiver and um, my lid. So here I put an eighth inch rabbiting on the master six by six blank. And then I'm gonna take my spiral flush trim bit and cut that little step off that I just made. So now I have an exact copy of my blank, but it's just one eighth inch thinner. So I'm gonna use this piece to make my lid mold. All right, so now I have a exact copy of what the outside dimensions of my lid are going to be, but I need to cut a hole into this, a larger piece of three quarter inch MDF that's a little bit smaller than that because we need to actually make a female mold. So to do that, I need to take a quarter inch off the edge of this, um, this piece that I just make so that I can cut this hole out. So I need to cut this exact shape out of this larger piece so that I can make the mold for the lid. And you'll see how that works here in a second. So you might be asking yourself, why wouldn't I just use a jigsaw to follow this line and cut this out? It's very, very hard to follow a jigsaw line exactly. No matter how good you are with it, it's always gonna be a little bit wonky. And we want the gap on this lid in this receiver to be exact. So we're using this rabbiting bit and this spiral flush trim bit that's a quarter inch wide in order to cut out this hole and it will be a perfect cutout so that my receiver and my lid are identical and the, the gap around the outside will be perfect. If I cut this with a jigsaw, I know that it would be off slightly. So I know, I know, I know, I need a router table. I'm going to buy one soon. Um, it's a little dangerous and sketchy doing this uh, the way that I was, um, but it's what I have to work with right now. And um, I'm making do with it. So here I cut um, a quarter inch off of that master template and I'm screwing it to this larger bottom piece. Now here I'm taking a quarter inch drill bit. So this drill bit is exactly the same diameter as my uh, spiral flush trim bit. So I just cut it, I drilled a pilot hole, and then I dropped the um, spiral flush trim bit in from the bottom, and here I am running it along the template. So you wanna go really slow with this, because if you slip just a little bit, the bit's gonna walk itself out, and you're gonna mess up your cut. So go super, super slow, making sure you keep the bit pressure against the template the best that you can. And when you get to the edge, you put a little bit of pressure on it and pull it away from the router bit. So because I did that, you get a little bit of excess here that I'm gonna need to trim it up with some sandpaper. So I like to round off the top of my molds a little bit so that the glass tends to fold outward when I lay the glass. If it had a 90 degree angle there, um, the glass would tend to want to flip back inwards um, and that could cause some air pockets. So here again, I'm just filling up the crease um, with some Bondo, spreading it in with my fingers, and then I'm going to use that same piece of hot glue with the radius on it. Uh, you can use a popsicle stick, whatever you have laying around that has a nice radius on it, and then I'm cleaning it up with my spatula so I don't have to sand as much. So here I am sanding um, the, first, um, the first mold that we made for the receiver, um, and then I'm going to be sanding the mold that we made for the lid. 
So that's it. That's part one of making a lid and receiver mold. So this receiver doesn't have a water gutter. Um, it just wasn't necessary. This customer was actually going to be using this, um, like I said, to access a fuel sending unit. And um, but you could modify this and make this as smaller, as smaller or bigger, or as any size that you want. So the techniques I used here to make this lid and receiver can be duplicated. Um, just got to change the dimensions uh, to what you need. So there will be a part two follow up to this video where I actually go through prepping the MDF and laying the actual glass, um, gel coat, things like that. And that will be part two of this. So stay tuned. I appreciate it, guys. See you in the next one.